Okay, good evening, everyone. We are back to another week of the weekly Parsha. Holding over here by Parsha's Tazria, which is bringing us into the world of the unfortunate sin of Lashon Har. We know that the, the, the punishment of Tsaras, of the Nagoyim, of the lesions or the Maka, kind of like the wound that a person receives for speaking Lashon Hara, is something that the Torah spends not just one, but two parshas on, Tazri and Mitzorah next week. And I'd like to delve a little bit tonight into the sin of Lashon Hara to understand what is the reaction that HaKadosh Baruch has, why it is Negat Saras. What is this punishment really all about? So the Torah says, when basing these words on the words of Rav Hirsch, the Torah speaks about this idea over here of the person who uses his speech for the wrong things. He says words of Lashon Hara, slander, disparaging words, evil speech, gossip about somebody else. And the response that a Kodesh Baruch Hu brings to that person is something called a nega tsaras. It is a nega is like a lesion or it's called it a call it a plague. It's a very hard word exactly to translate exactly what it means. I believe that Rav Hirsch refers to it as like a, as a disease, as a malady. He calls it in English a leprous mark, but in his commentary he calls it like a disease that a person receives for speaking the words of Lashon Har. So he says over an amazing, amazing idea over here. And then perhaps we'll see more deeper into the concept of why we like to speak Lashon Hara so much. <clears throat> it says in the Pasik that or basaro, the or the skin of basaro, of the flesh of the person, is struck by the nega, by this disease that we call tsaras. Leprosy is not really a good translation. It's not what it's not what tsaras was. It was a disease that would come to the skin that was that was given directly by a Baruch Hu, for that sin, the Lashon Har, that a person had spoken. Says the, says Rav Hirsch the following idea, that in order to understand what Neget Saras is, we have to relate it to the Adam, to the person himself. And he says like this, the Nega, which is this lesion, which is this disease that comes upon a person's skin, it's struck on the Or Basar Adam. The or is the, the skin, the basar is the flesh, and the adam is the man. It strikes the skin and the flesh of the man. So what does it have to do over here? Says Rav Hurst the following idea. Or, aleph, vav, resh, you're going to have to hold on to these words over here. I surely have a chart, a, a sign that says the letters. Ayin, vav, resh. The root of that word is air. Ayin, resh. The word air means to awake, it means to be sensitive, it means to be impacted by the outside world that is around you. The or, the skin that is on a person's body, their flesh, everything that is about the physical world, it is so sensitive, it is easily impacted from the world that it is that is that is outside of it coming onto that flesh. Says Rav Hirsch, a person must think to himself, I'm an Adam. I'm a man, Aleph, Dalid, Mem. What is the mission? Why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu put me into this world? What does he want from the Adam? What does he want from the man? So he says, what does HaKadosh Baruch Hu want? As we know, he wants Adam to be doyme, to be similar, to emulate, to compare, to be like the ways of Hashem. Adam, Aleph, Dalid, Mem is related to the word, word Dalid Mem Hey, which is Doime, which means to be similar. Says the Rav Hirsch, what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants, is that a, an Adam, a person in this world, should spend their life and spend their days and their time and their energies emulating and making themselves Doime, similar to the ways of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And, and what does express that in this word, in this world? So HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us a body, he gave us a goof. And the body is made of basar, is made out of flesh. And the flesh of a person, the body that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has given us, 
which is housing our neshamas, is supposed to be mevaser. It is supposed to announce and herald all of the greatness that I am trying to do myself as I am emulating the ways of Hashem. And therefore says of her the following idea. If the mission of a person in this world is to liken themselves to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, if the reason that Hashem brought us into this world is that we should emulate His ways, Hashem is compassionate, Hashem is merciful, Hashem is loving, Hashem is forgiving, Hashem judges each and every one of us favorably, because if He wouldn't, we would all be destroyed in an instant. As one of my Rebbeim once gave the famous mashal, <clears throat> if Hashem would really um, have a midas hadin, an, an attribute of judgment, that would come down and come down on a person when they deserve to be punished, every bar mitzvah boy would walk up to the bima, yamon, he would get called up for his first aliyah, he would begin to say the bracha, and he would end up dropping dead at the bima. Because the chances that a person doesn't sin are zero to none. It's impossible. If the purpose of my life, and therefore we know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu judges everybody favorably. He has patience and he takes his time and he doesn't judge us immediately and right away. He tries to figure out why would that person miss a minion today? What's going on in his life? Why did that husband get upset with his wife and talk nasty? What is going on in his life? Why did he dive in the entire time and all he was thinking about was the big meeting that he has at nine o'clock this morning, reviewing all the words he didn't say to his competitor? Why? So it says HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I understand. I judge, I don the skus. I judge favorably. So if that's our goal, if that's why HaKadosh Baruch Hu put us in this world, and that's what he wants, then if a person does the opposite of what Hashem wants us to do, and here he's learning, we end up speaking Lashon Hara. What drives a person to speak Lashon Hara? When a person acts, the opposite of Hashem. I speak Lashon Hara gossip when I see the bad in another person. I speak Lashon Hara when I get jealous of another person. I speak Lashon Hara gossip and slander about another person when I'm not patient with them to try to understand why are they doing what they are doing. I speak Lashon Hara because I'm a human being. I'm emotional. My, my feelings, my emotions, they get hurt very easily. I speak Lashon Hara when I feel bad about myself. And to make myself feel better, I'll put somebody else down, and that's how I'm going to catapult myself up. Says Rav Hirsch, if a person speaks Lashon Hara, you are behaving the opposite of the way that HaKadosh Baruch Hu deals with us. You're looking at a person in a negative light. HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't look at us in a negative light. HaKadosh Baruch Hu's understanding He's forgiving. He is patient. He is able to overlook the injustice that we do to him every single day, a thousand times a day. When a person doesn't act the way that Hashem wants, so we get negot saras. What is the language of nega nun gimel ayin? Says of Hirsch so beautifully over here that nega means negia, to touch. It means to touch. And he says, the finger of HaKadosh Baruch Hu is coming and it's touching the person. It's like tapping them on the shoulder and saying, let me remind you of something, of why you came to this world. Let me remind you why I gave you a mouth and lips and a tongue and teeth over there. Let me remind you why I gave you vocal cords, what they're meant to be used for. You're using them for the wrong things? Says HaKadosh Baruch let me come and tap on you and touch you with negot saras, with this disease, not leprosy, that's really not the word, but this disease skin which you are going to receive to remind you that you should know that I, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, who placed you in this world to emulate my ways, to imitate me to a great extent and to master the midas the character traits of Hashem, and you're not doing it, I have to stop you in your tracks so that you will learn how to control your speech, 
you will learn how to think about another person. You will treat them in the right way. You won't undermine them and put them down to try to ruin their reputation just because you're angry with them and you're upset with them and you're jealous of them. No, you won't do that. And therefore, he touches us. Negot saras. He taps us over here right on the shoulder maybe it's on the hand maybe it's on our clothing maybe it's on the walls of our house to remind us that there's a way that you're supposed to live and now that you got the saras and you feel the tap coming from Hashem you're supposed to stop in your tracks and now you're going to have to go through the process of purification to become no longer a metzara no longer one that is bearing the lesions of leprosy but someone that will be able to purify themselves, redeem themselves, and hopefully not go back to their evil ways. The Rashi writes in the Chumash over here that one of the punishments that the Mitzayra is going to receive is as long as that nega, that lesion, that disease of leprosy is on him, yitma tamehu, he is tame, he is fully impure. Badad Yeshev, he sits by himself. Michutz Lamachene Moshavoy, he sits outside of the camp all on his own. Rashi is bothered over here. It's really a Gemara in Erechim. But the, and the Gemara is bothered. There's many people in Klal Yisrael that become tame, they become impure. There's many people that, uh, that receive, they become a receptacle for the impurities of dead animals, of, of different things that are going on in this world. They never have a punishment where they have to sit bundled, where they have to sit all by themselves. So why is it that the person who spoke Lush and Arv, seemingly a, somewhat of a small type of a thing over here, compared to someone that embraces a dead animal, someone that uh, does other things that make him into an impure person, so why does this person, the one who speaks Lashon, have to sit all by himself? So this is the Gemara asks, Manishtana Mitzorah, what is different about the Mitzorah? She'ar Mitzorah, Bodad Yeshe Bichutz Lamachene Moshava, he has to sit all by himself outside of the camps of Klal Yisrael. Says the Gemara, Hu Hivdil Bein Ish Le'ishtoi Bein Ish Le'ehu. Because this person spoke Lashonara and he spoke badly about a certain person, he creates a wedge in the relationships between husbands and wives and a wedge in the relationship between man and his fellow man and his friends. Lefikach Amr Torah, therefore the Torah says, Badad Yeshev, he must sit all by himself because since that he caused other people to be separate, because the words of Lashon Hara, that's what they do. They create friction and machlekes and arguments and fights and ill feelings. Therefore, your punishment is you have to be all by yourself as well. And part of the tshuva process, part of that which he has to go through, says the Torah, says Chazal, is that he has to sit alone. And while he's sitting alone, he'll think to himself, why is Hashem making me sit alone? What did I do so bad? Oh, because I spoke Lashon Hara, I hurt their marriage. Because I spoke Lashon Hara, I destroyed their friendship. There are mothers and daughters that do not speak to each other because somebody said over Lashon Hara one against the other. There are families that they cannot go to every family simcha. The cousins will not go to this one, and this one won't go to that one, and this one, if they go, they won't look at each other, won't talk to each other, because some silly thing happened, some words of Lashonara began, and that's the end of the relationship. You caused it by speaking Lashonara, says the Torah, go sit by yourself. You caused other people to be by themselves, you're going to be by yourself as well. One of the greatest questions in the world of Lashon Hara is, why are we so excited to speak Lashon Hara? A, a person doesn't get excited to go and run around and do znus, God forbid. A person's not like so excited, like he can't stop himself from eating Big Macs. If the guy's a religious Jew, he doesn't eat Big Macs. If a guy's a religious Jew, he doesn't look on Shabbos and think, himself, well, I'd like to turn on and off the light, on and off the light, on and off the light. He doesn't do such things. But it's a crazy idea over here. 
We're all religious, and yet we all speak Lashon Hara all the time. I don't want to say Lashon Hara about you, but I'm just going to say the truth anyway. We all speak Lashon Hara constantly, every single day. Again, I won't turn on the light on and off on Shabbos. I won't get in the car and drive back and forth on Shabbos. I won't eat food that is not kosher all the time, every single day. I won't do such a thing. That's simple. I can control myself. When it comes to Lashon Hara, we are out of control. I, we go, we live, we learn the halachas, we learn the svarim, we see a picture, we hang the picture of the Chavetz Chaim up in our living room, in our dining room. So every time that we're sitting at the dining room table on Shabbos and that conversation of Lashon Hara comes in, we glance at the holy visage of the Chavetz Chaim and we'll control ourselves. Then we just go like this and we say big Lashon Hara anyway. Why is that? Why do we have no problem speaking Lashon Hara? The Vilna Goyen writes in his very famous letter, the Igeris Hagra that he wrote to his mother and to his wife. He speaks over here at length. He cautions his wife and his mother, learn how to guard your tongue. Learn how not to speak Lashon Hara. He was planning to go to Eretz Israel, And he said, when you come to the land of Israel, it's a good thing to keep in mind. When you come to the land of Israel, you have to be a different person. You cannot talk the way that you spoke in Vilna. I don't know how the, the wife of the Vilna going spoke in Vilna. I'm sure the only things out of her mouth were Tehillim and, and Davening and words to her children. Come, my children, let's learn Torah. That's what she spoke about. But he tells his wife, don't, you cannot come to, Lush, to Eretz Yisrael with the same mouth that you have in Vilna. And I beg of you to learn how to guard your tongue from speaking Lashon Hara. Because if you come to Eretz Yisrael with the Vilna tongue, it's not going to go over very well. Says the, <clears throat> says the Vilna going. he's speaking over here about about the things that, he, that about Lashon Hara that a person has to really guard his tongue and be careful from. And he says, he says like this. So I'm, I'm learning the words of the Vilna Gain with the commentary of Rav Dan Segel. Rav Dan Segel is one of the Ziknei Adur, the elders of the generation. He's a tremendous Baal Musa. His whole approach to life is a very sweet and dedicated Musa approach. And the, and the Vilna Goyen writes over here to his wife that I beg of you, please. I beg of you that the thing that you have to be careful of, how, I don't need to expound upon the severity of the sin of Lashonar anymore. You should know that. And says with Dan Segel, Dover Shetzar Chizuk Tamid Lashonar is something that requires strengthening all of the time. Velama, why? Why of all of the Averas that are out there in the world of Klal Yisrael is the Avera of Lashonar of gossip something that needs to be strengthened constantly? Again, in, if you ever are around the secular world, this one, it happens when you're in an airport, okay? You're in an airport, you're sitting there in your seat in the airport, minding your own business. I was trapped last year, I got stuck in a, in a rain, in a, in a storm in, in uh, New Jersey. And I was stuck in the airport for, I think, no less than like nine or 10 hours. It was nine or 10 of the most painful hours of my life because I was surrounded on all sides by everybody, every person under the sun, this was God bless America. The Statue of Liberty would have been very proud of that, very proud of that crowd that was there. But every person, all that was coming out of their mouth, lush and hard. Lush and hard, 101 textbook lush and hard. Oh, and this person did this, and you, you see the way she did this. Blah, 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 blah. It's all they talked about. Klal Yisrael, we would love to think that after so many years of having Sefer Chavetz Chaim sitting on our desk, so many years of being members of the Chavetz Chaim Heritage Foundation and even sponsoring maybe a day in one of their many books and watching all of their videos and hearing all the drushes, we would like to think that, of course, me, 
I never speak Lashon Nahar. And the problem is, is that sadly, we do speak Lashon Nahar. Many of us, first of all, don't even understand what the halachas of Lashon Hara really are all about. And therefore, we're trampling on Lashon Hara daily, daily, constantly. But he asked the question, why do we need so much chizuk in the laws of Lashon Hara? And he says over here the following idea. Because, as we know, Hadibu Shala Adam, the speech of a person, it is the true essence of who the person really is. And therefore, it's really hard for a person to hold himself back from expressing himself. Now, what does it mean that the words that a person speaks are the etzim mahus, the actual essence of who the person is? We know that when Hashem created the world and he created mankind, it says, ve'apav nishmas elokim HaKadosh Baruch Hu blew into the, into the nostrils of man, nishmas chayim, a living soul. What does Uncle say over there in those words? L'ruach memalala, he gave us the spirit of speech. What separates man from every other creation in this world? He gave us the ability to speak, to communicate the deepest aspects of our neshama comes out through our mouths, through our tongues, through our speech. And that is how we are connecting our kinemius, our inner essence, who we are with the rest of the world around us. That means that the koyach hadib, or the power of speaking of speech, is what defines who we are. Dogs cannot talk. Dolphins cannot talk. Owls cannot talk. Lizards cannot talk. Every animal in the world grunts and moans and groans and make noises. Only man can speak. And the reason we can speak is because we have a neshama. The neshama is the essence of who you are. If that's the essence of who you are, that means that every time that you're speaking, it is you that is expressing itself. Says of Don Segel, you know why Lush and R is so easy, so difficult to avoid? Because when you speak, you're being yourself. And it's very normal that a person wants to speak. So how do you shut the person down from being themselves? And therefore, the mouth is always running. The words are always coming. And our emotions are always flaring up inside of ourselves. And it's very, very difficult to say the right words. And therefore, Lashonar is something that unfortunately and sadly, we don't have such control over. Says HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Neget Saras, don't forget. Don't forget why you came to this world. He's tapping us. Don't forget, you came to this world to be like me. You came to this world to be kind and benevolent and loving and patient and slow to get angry. You came to this world to judge every single Jew that you meet, l'chav z'chus, to judge them favorably so that you won't see the bad that's in them. And because that you didn't and you behaved not like me, I'm nogeya you, I'm touching you right now with the negat saras. I'm reminding you of what you're really supposed to do. Now go sit by yourself, says Hashem, and think in his baidadus, in private chambers, why you are there. What's the reason? Because your power of speech that you used ended up destroying marriages, damaging relationships, hurting people's lives, their professions, their reputation. You cause them to be by themselves, you have to be by yourself now as well. The Chavetz Chaim, when he wrote the great Sefer Chavetz Chaim, he was a relatively young man. I believe that he was only 30 years old. Maybe he was 33 at the time. He was a very young man. And he knew that the only way that he'll be able to have his safer become something that will be treasured in the eyes of the Jewish people, is since that he was a virtually unknown young Talmud Chacham, he would need Haskamah's approbations from some of the greatest sages of the generation. 
So imagine the young 30-year-old Chavetz Chaim, who most people were not so aware of, walking into the private study chambers of some of the greatest sages of that generation, giving them his book, the Sefer Chavetz Chaim, all about the laws of Lashon which was a revolutionary work at the time. He condensed all of the Chumash, all of the Gemara, all of the Rishonim, all of the Shulchan Aruch. He condensed it all into one place so that if anybody ever has a Shiloh question and wants to know the laws of Lashon they just open up the Sefer Chavetz Chaim, they'll know what to do. It was a revolutionary work. And he needed approbations. So there's two stories about how difficult it was for him to get the approbation. He went to one of the great say, I don't know which one it was, and he presents his work, and then the man, and the, the Rav begins looking through it. Very impressed. It's very impressive. If you're a Talmud Chacham, you'll appreciate the greatness, the giganticness of this work. And he's going through it, but he looks at the Chavetz Chaim, young man, and he thinks to himself, how is it possible that such a young man like the Chavetz Chaim he was able to write a safer like this. Is he really holding in these things? Maybe he has like an encyclopedic mind. Maybe he's like the, the Bar-Ilan on the computer. He could just total recall. He can bring down everything that there is. How do I know that the Chavetz Chaim is really a Chavetz Chaim? How do I know that knows how to guard his mouth from speaking Lashon Hara? So he said, um, I'm not ready to give you a Haskama approbation yet. He said, I'd like you to meet with one of my, uh, one of the boys here in the yeshiva and uh, I want, he, he needs to ask you a few questions. And after that, perhaps I'll give you the approbation. So the Rosh Hashiva goes and he says to one of the boys, come here. He says, you see this young man over here? He just wrote a book all about Lashon Hara, guarding your tongue from speaking Lashon Hara. It's hard for me to believe that a young man like this could be holding in all of the areas of guarding his tongue the way that it says in the book. I want you to engage him in conversation. And I want you to try as hard as you can to get that young man, Yisrael Mayor Kagan, I want you to get him to speak Lashon Hara. Talk about this, talk about that. Whatever you have to do, try to get the young man to speak Lashon Hara. I want to know if he does or not. So the Bacha takes the charge of his Rosh Hashiva and he sits with the Chavetz Chaim and they speak for, I, I don't know, several hours. And this boy was trying in and out to get the words of Lashon Hara and the Chavetz Chaim. He could not get one peep out of the mouth of the Chavetz Chaim. He came back to his Rosh Hashiva and he told him, I tried this, I tried that, I talked about this controversial, I talked about this. Nothing, not a single word. Said the Rosh Hashiva, tell the Chavetz Chaim to come back in. And he said, I will gladly give you an approbation for your book. You know how to control your speech? You know how not to let your ruach, mamalal, or the essence of who you are, be led in the wrong direction? You know how to guard your tongue from saying the wrong things? For you, I'll give an invitation. The other story is that he went to a different Rosh Hashiva. When the other Gedele Ador, the great leaders of the generation, he asked him for an approbation. And the man looked, the Rosh Hashiva looked at the Sefer, he was very impressed, astounded by the plethora of knowledge and tutelage and scholarship that was put into this book. But again, he felt Chavetz Chaim much too young. Not possible that a man like this can actually know everything that it says in the book and keep his life in such a way of no Lashon Hara. Can't be. And he said, I'm sorry, young man, Yisrael Mayor. I'm sorry. I cannot give you an, uh, a scum and approbation for your book. He said, it's just, I just can't. It looks amazing and fascinating. I wish you a lot of atzlach, a lot of love. I just, I can't give you an approbation. I'm sorry. And the Chavetz Chaim said, no problem. I appreciate it. And he left. And as he's walking down the road to come from coming from the yeshiva, he meets up with one of the bachim, one of the boys from the yeshiva. And the boy sees him with his satchel in his hand. And he says, can I help you? And he says, no, no, no. I was just here to see the yeshiva. Oh, do you need something? No, I wrote a sefer about Lashon Hara. And I asked the yeshiva for an approbation. And it, he said he won't give me one, but it's fine. That's fine. I'm going on my way. I'll go find somebody else. So the boy looks at the Chavetz Chaim. He says, he wouldn't give you an approbation? You know, this was Shashiva. I'm telling you, he's so serious. And he's so, he just doesn't have patience for people. And I've seen him before do these things with other people. It's very hard for me to understand. 
And the Chavon says, Chas Hashem, don't talk like that. Your Shiva and Adam God is a great person. Don't talk like that, please. He's a great person. Doesn't matter whether he gave me an affirmation or not. He's a great man, a great scholar, a great Talmud Chacham. He doesn't have to give an affirmation to everybody. No, this says the Baruch, you don't understand. I've seen him before with other people. I know the way he treats it. I'm telling you, he's such a hard, hard kind of personality. I'm telling you, stop, he said, please. Don't talk about your Shashiv like that. He said, Sadiq, he's a great person. Don't talk like that. The Bacha runs into the Yeshiva. And he says, Shiva, Shashiva, that man that was here, yes. The one that wanted to have the same on, on Shri Sashan, yes. The one who said that you, that you didn't want to give the approbation, yes. Let me tell you what happened. I spoke, I spoke about you. I said not nice things about you. And this man kept saying, Chas v'shalim. Don't say that. You can't talk that way. He's a Talmud Chacham. He's a Tzadik. Don't say such things. I don't know why it is that she wouldn't give him an approbation. But one thing I know for sure, this man is a living embodiment of what he writes in that Sefer. So she said, that's why I wouldn't give him because I was afraid that he wasn't. Call him back in. And he calls him back in. He writes him a beautiful askama and approbation for Sefer Chavetz Chaim. A person who learns how to soar the shayin chamira, they learn how to guard their mouth from speaking evil. They learn how to control the ruach, the, the, the winds that come and blow in this direction and that direction. You find yourself in the group of people and there's conversations going on and they're talking about this and they're talking about that. I was just someplace today. I'm not going to say where I was because then you'll know it's Lashon Hara. I was someplace today. It was mamish, 100% Lashon hard the Raisa that they were speaking to me. Now, two things. Number one, I knew I was giving shir tonight in Lashon Har, so I'm not going to answer back. Was the Lashon number two? Baruch Hashem, we're learning the laws of Lashon every single morning in the WhatsApp group. So a little bit I know what Lashon sounds like now. A little bit. I'm not such great myself, but a little bit I know. And these two guys are sitting there, and they're speaking Lashon Har the Raisa. Torah prohibition to my very face. And I was like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. okay, I, I, can't, I can't listen. I can't listen. You know the person? I, you know the, okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. So nice to see you. But if you don't know the laws of Lashonara, you don't know how to control yourself. You have to keep it out because it's an expression. It says we've done Segel is an expression of the person himself. And the, the Vilna Goin writes in his letter the following words. And he says, um, he says like this. He says, the piv. Every single moment that a person seals his mouth. He keeps his mouth shut. He will merit for himself the Or Hagonas, a hidden light. That no angel or any other celestial being could ever imagine and fathom what you're going to receive. If you learn how to control the words that are coming out of your mouth, if you learn how to hold yourself back and don't say the words that you want to say, which you feel like sometimes, I got to say it, I just got to say it. You should know, HaKadosh Baruch knows how hard that is. It's perhaps one of the hardest Nisyonah's challenges in the world because in our mind we think, Lashonar, not such a bad thing. It's just speech, what's the big deal? You can't even see it. If I turn on the light on Shabbos, okay, I see I turn on the light on Shabbos. If I eat the Big Mac, I see I eat the Big Mac. What do the words do? They're just words, they're floating in the air. Says the Vilna Gain, as your choice and piv, you close your mouth, you seal it off. The reward that you're going to receive is enormous beyond belief. You will not be able to fathom what you're going to get. The Chavetz Chaim himself writes, I want to give you a reason why you should not speak Lush and Harm. Okay, there's a thousand reasons, but I still want to give you a reason. And he says, the tremendous damage that results 
from the words of Lashonara that a person speaks. What damage are we talking about? The damage that you cause to another human being? Says the Chavetz Chaim, Ki Adam, who masurim. When a person speaks Lashon Hara, they are poigem, they damage their, their Lashon, they damage their tongue and their mouth. Says the Chavetz Chaim, you have one mouth, right? You have one mouth that's busy mouthing off the words of Lashon Hara. Do you know what it does to your lips? Do you know what it does to your mouth? It's pagan, it causes spiritual damage to your mouth and to your lips. Now you finish speaking Lashon Hara. You're on the phone. You're with one of your great buddies, your Lashon Hara buddy. You're on your phone. You're speaking a good few words of Lashon Hara. But I got to go. I got to go to Mincha. Then you run into the shul. And you're davening mincha. Then you come, Shmon Esrei. Oh, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Hashem says, are you kidding me? The mouth that just got damaged, speaking words of Lashon Hara? Do you think that your mouth has the power for me to hear your words of Kedusha, of holiness, of Tefillah, of Tehillim? Do you think that I can hear? Says the Chavetz Chaim, you've got to know that when you speak Lashon Hara, you know what you are doing to yourself. You are damaging yourself. You are your worst enemy. The muscle that I would like to use is that imagine you have corroded pipes, rusty corroded pipes. And the, when you turn on the water and the water comes out, it's brown, it's ichy, it's green. There's sediment and residue that's in there. So you say to yourself, oh, maybe the water is not good water. So you end up going out to the Fiji mountains and you get a whole big barrel of Fiji water and you bring it back to your house and you hook it up to the faucet and you turn it on and it's dirty, corroded and rusty, filled with sediment and filth and dirt. And you say, I don't understand. I brought the best water in the world. I went to the Japanese Himalayan mountains over there to bring it back. Why is it so dirty? And the answer is because it doesn't matter how clean the water is. It matters how dirty and corroded the pipes are. Says the Chavetz Chaim, same thing is going on over here. If my pipes, my lips, my tongue, my mouth becomes corroded with Lush and Hara, it becomes filthy and dirty from all of the words of gossip, of slander that came out of this mouth. Then when I bring the pure words of tefillah, asking HaKadosh Baruch Hu, begging to Hashem, davening for such brach and atzlacha, davening for parnasa, davening for everything we daven for, and it's coming out of this mouth, says HaKadosh Baruch Hu, if you could see in the spiritual worlds, you would see all of your tefillahs are corroded. They're dirty. They're filthy. They're ichi. How can I hear them? Because they came out of a mouth that is dirty as well. And therefore, says the Torah, you got to be so careful with the words that are coming out of your mouth. If you have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. When in doubt, do without. If you're not sure is what I'm about to say, Lashon or not, do yourself a favor, like the Vilna Gaon says, Chosen Piv, seal your lips. And if you do, the reward you're going to receive or holding back your Yetzirah to speak Lashon Hara, the reward is going to be enormous. And one of the benefits is your lips are going to be clean. And if your lips are clean, when the words of Tefillah go out of your lips, HaKadosh Baruch will hear them right away. When your Tefillah is a Shman Esrei of Tehillim, of Panasa, Hatzlacha, Bracha, all the things are leaving your lips, Hashem says, those lips that don't speak Lashon Har, those lips that are so clean and so pure, those pure tefillahs going right through. I want to leave you off with a story. It's a personal story. I think that I got my wife's permission to say this story tonight. She, I believe that she said yes. If she didn't, so please 
she'll forgive me. About 20 years ago, we had the schus to go to Eretz Yisrael for Sukkis. We had three children at the time, and our youngest was more or less a baby. He was maybe about six months old, maybe even less. And while we were in Eretz Yisrael, we also found out that my wife was expecting a couple, two months or so. She was already expecting two or three months into a pregnancy. So it was very exciting. We had little kids, and we're in Eretz Yisrael, and we're getting all the brachas and davening and everything. The baby ended up getting this very rare kind of like disease type of thing called Kaksaki. And when you in the medical field know what this is? What? It, it's, it, it, yeah, Japanese. It's, it's, a, it's a, like a virus that's in the mouth. It's like almost like a herpes of the mouth. It's extremely painful. And for a child, for a baby that can't do anything, it's like, it's a nightmare. It is shrieking and crying, not being able to sleep. Oh, it was a beautiful trip there. I just saw that. And he was a wreck. This baby was a wreck. <coughs> and there's really no medicine. That's part of the problem. There's really no medicine. The only medicine is, the only thing that relieved the child was when he was nursing for my wife. That was it. So the baby has Kaksaki. He's screaming and crying all day long. My wife is, is nursing around the clock to try to calm him down. And we find out that a woman that is expecting and nursing and has a baby that has kaksaki, it's really not so healthy for the fetus that's inside of her. At the end of the day, we made it to where it's spelled. One of the last days that we were there, somebody that we knew said, oh, he has that? You know what he has to do? Trufa safta, which means an old grandmother remedy. What do you do? You have to go to a farm and you have to find a goat. And you have to put the baby's mouth under the udder of the goat. And you have to then squeeze the goat milk straight out of the goat into the mouth. And the goat milk has the bacterial powers to get rid of the cocksocket that's in the mouth. We said, wow, this, is gonna, this sounds like an adventure. So we located a moshav that had a farm. And we went there. It was such an exciting moment. And I'm holding my son in my arms like this. And we go out to the goat. And they, we put his head right underneath the other. And they bring and See, I'm not even telling you what son it was. That way you're not going to know because he'll be too embarrassed. And they're squeezing out the goat milk into his mouth. He's crying. But it's going in there. We're like making sure that it rubs around everywhere where there's these, these, these uh, lesions and everything. And then they gave us a, a nice bag of goat milk to take with us for the road. And sure enough, within about 48 hours, everything was gone. Everything. It got rid of everything. So that was the most exciting part of our trip. Maybe one of the most exciting parts to Eretz Yisrael. But as a result of that, it was very hard on my wife's pregnancy. She had a terrible miscarriage when we came back to America. Very, very harsh, painful one. It was very, very difficult. Around this time, after all of this happened, and it was a whole months of recovery, it was not easy. We were living in Yeshiva Lane at the time in Baltimore. And the women's group, the Neshe, the women's group that was on Yeshiva Lane, they had brought in a study program to learn the laws of, of, of Shmir Salashin, to learn the laws of Lashon Har, of how not to speak Lashon Har. And they were all going to be learning together out of a book. And there was going to be exams that they would have to take to be part of this program. And in that way, every woman that was going to do it, they would be able to have the schus to learn the laws of Lush and Hara in their life and be able to keep their, their, their speech much more under control. The great Manchester Rosh Hashiva, Rav Yehuda Zev Segal, Zeich Tzadik V'Kodesh Livracha, who was known in his generation as the Chavetz Chaim of his generation, he said that anyone that has ever had troubles in life Anyone that ever had difficulties in life or needed things in life, I always tell them, learn two halachas of Lashon Har a day. In the schos of two halachas of Lashon Har every single day, you will see only brachas in your life. So my wife knew about this haftacha, this promise of the Manchester Rosh Hashiva. 
And although she still wasn't feeling 100%, but she heard about this group that was starting in the laws of Lashonara, she said, you know what? I'm going to learn the laws of Lashonara. It will be a schos for us, a schos that I heal, and a schos that will have children afterwards as well. And my wife began learning the laws of Lashon Hara, and HaKadosh Baruch is the one who runs the world. Several months after she began learning the laws of Lashon Hara, where she was becoming such an expert, it was no fun to speak with her anymore because I had nothing I could say. But after several months of learning the laws of Lashon Hara, HaKadosh Baruch Hu made a nais, and because the Hashem, we were zayka to become, be expecting again and then have our fourth child. When a person guards their mouth from Lashon Hara, when a person holds themselves back, when a person makes their receptacles, the pipeline to Hashem, clean and pure with no corrosion and no rust and no filth and no dirt. So then I could have said, oh, you're asking for something? You need something? You want some help? You want some parnasa? You want some help? What do you need? Those words, straight into Hashem. Says the Torah in this week's Parsha, you know what Neged Saras is? It is when a person is not living up to the expectations that Hashem has for them, and Hashem comes and He taps them. Negiya, He taps them with His finger and He says, Reb Yid, my dear friend, did you forget who you are? Did you forget why you're here? Did you forget what your mouth is for? Be like me. And being like me means we live above the lowliness of this world and falling into the traps of jealousy and our emotions and saying the wrong things. Be like me, says Hashem. Judge people favorably. See the good that's in another person. Don't look down and don't speak bad of them to make yourself feel better. Be like me. And if you'll be like me, says the Torah, that's when all the brachas will begin to come. Emir Hashem, we should all be zeicha in our own lives to strengthen ourselves in the laws of Lashon Hara. You know, the Chavetz Chaim, it was known, was a good schmoozer. You would think that he wrote all the laws of Lashon Hara, that he would never talk to anybody because anything you say could be Lashon Hara. No, the Chavetz Chaim was so good at the laws of Lashon Hara, he could schmooze for an hour and not one word of Lashon Hara would come out of his mouth. So we should learn how to schmooze. We should learn how to talk. We should learn how to daven. Keep our mouths clean and pure. And in that sechus, may our Kodesh Baruch Hu answer all of our prayers for ourselves, for our families, and for all of Klal Yisrael.